a couple of stories that have come out in the, in the last week. Uh, what one being about the the ownership of the ground, and I do go back to the Dong interview, <laughs> fucking fast that was, uh, on WM when he was asked the question and he came back with, yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Which, which is probably not the sort of answer that I was looking for. Probably wanted a little bit more sort of substance than that. Um, and yeah, it's, it seems that the, the ownership or part ownership of the, of the ground has maybe, maybe changed hands. So um, Tom, I'll, Tom, I'll give you first dibs. What, what your thought, thoughts on what you've heard and, and your concerns maybe? Um. I'm quite concerned, to be honest, because I don't, I don't know. I the fact that the club has did de- decline to comment is weird. That's that's the bit that doesn't settle right with me. Declining to comment, why can't you just be open and transparent about what you're trying to do? Because to me, you could look at it and it just it does just kind of look like cost cutting, uh, mm-hmm. essentially. Uh, but it also gives more overall ownership to the Mister king elusive man that you know the man in the suit that nobody knows about um it's um i don't know i don't know it it doesn't settle right with me but from what i'm reading it's or it's almost like this von petch bloke has become more has become more of an owner of the club whereas sort of trillion trophy asia or above that you know mr king is becoming more of an owner of the stadium And I don't know what the end game is. Things are constantly changing. And I don't know whether it's to balance the books to kind of escape FFP um, or just to be more profitable or so numbers look better. And I think that might be the angle they're trying to go for, unless by some minor miracle they want to sell the club, which would be great. I'd be all for that. Um, I don't know. It's really hard to tell this. Just... It's so many numbers and layer on layer on layer of different deal with such and such and such and such. And it, it almost seems like it's so much so it confuses you and yeah. kind of throws you off a bit. There's, there's definitely something behind it. And I think that's why the club won't comment because there, there'll, be, there'll be a reason why they don't want to say anything. Because if it, was, if it was nothing to worry about, then why can't they say that? Yeah, At, I mean, at I- least. I think it's like in most things, you know, you'll, you'll get some very clever accountants looking at the books and saying, okay, well, what you can do here is by, you know, to maybe offset any tax implications or reduce the profitability or in, increase the losses, depending on how you want your business to perform down the line, whether it's to sell the club or n- not sell it and consolidate a little bit. There's so many different motivations of doing, making those sort of business decisions that you can't really come out in an open forum and say, oh, yeah, we've sold it because, yeah, we, we need to conform to FFP or we need to show more profit on the books, whatever it may be. What The reality of it, you could you could probably just about get to it at one point. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm with you, Tom. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's so cloak and dagger and it's, it's very much yeah. a, a backdrop to this ownership. I mean, to be fair, if they've sold part of the ground... Hopefully they sold the fucking cock and the Tilton because it's falling down. And um, <laughs> but, uh, I don't but know whether yeah. it's Dong trying to save his job and make the numbers look better. Uh, he'll, fucking, he'll need more than that, believe me. When yeah. we come on to the next topic, Carl, what, what, any, any, can you shed any light on this uh, merry-go-round? <laughs> um, probably shouldn't use the words I want to use. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's just. It, uh... It just speaks volumes about the ownership, doesn't it? All the way through, you know, from, from when they took over to now, it's just been one pile of dog shit after the other, isn't it? Really, let, let's be honest, it's just been terrible. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think there's anyone that can really shed a whole amount of light on it, to be fucking honest. It's like you say, cloak and dagger, smoke and mirrors. I think my biggest concern, and I, and I agree with Tom, is probably the lack of transparency. Like, I know they're not going to come out and tell us everything. Of course they're not. No one ever does that, but there's never really been any communication from the club about anything. I mean, I think if you remember when we lost, do you remember the the second sanction we got um, from the EFL for breaching the business plan or whatever? Like they sent out a statement at something like quarter to 12 at fucking night. Do you know what I mean? Like you just, in these moments, you need someone in the club to go, okay, we need to at least let the fans know what's going on. Because ultimately they're the heartbeat of the club. 
we're the ones that are going to pay for Blues TV while we're not there. We're the ones that are going to pay for the tickets, the shirts, the fucking little things that go in the back of the car, like your little stickers and stuff, you know, and your coasters or whatever else you want to buy from the club shop, you know. And there just seems to be no consideration still of the fans, which is just an outrageous thing. Um, yeah. Let's just see what Miss, whoever it is that's bought it is. Miss Ying Ying Yang Yang, whatever her name is. I can't <laughs> uh, yeah, remember. I, I can't, yeah. wh- whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And, and I know Tom it's double says, barreled. Yeah, it's definitely double barreled. I think it, a lot of it seems to be uh, started at the very top with, like Tom said, this Mr. King. And. Um, Obviously, I think Dan Ivory does loads of fantastic work on it. And reading his articles, I mean, that hurts my head just reading it. God knows how he feels writing the fuckers, to yeah. be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, I just do any of us know. We're probably going to end up playing on fucking Heath somewhere. Brian Dick raised a really interesting point, <clears throat> and that is where is the ticket revenue going to go? When fans are back in, where does the ticket revenue go? Because if the stadium is now no longer officially part of the club, which which it isn't because it's being you know, rented to us, um, which is scary in itself because you don't want to end up like Cov. You know, if things fall apart, people fall out, we don't have a fucking ground. Um, so that's, that's worrying in itself. Um, however, where will things like ticket revenue go and all of that sort of stuff? It's, I don't know. Because that, that is essentially part of the stadium and also, also, you know, your food and beverages, everything. I don't, it's it's all quite worrying how it could go about, I suppose. Um, however, Daniel Ivory, who you just mentioned, has just tweeted um, saying, what are the chances of the club being sold in the near future? Uh, quite high with uh, 21.64% of it was sold to Vong Petch in December, who I mentioned earlier. Mm. So he is now the majority yeah. owner, and we've not heard a fucking thing from him. I, I know nothing about him. Uh, and the stadium is obviously being in, in the process of completely sold off. So whether this is a very, very, very quiet selling of the entire club, which it could be, who the fuck is Vong Petch? That's my question. <laughs> Realistically, who? Because why can't that sounds they just like a T-shirt to me? Exactly. Why can't the they just music? come out and say we're selling the club? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like why can't they just say they're selling the club? Because it, you know, Daniel Ivory did mention it could be the sale of the club because it looks, it sort of looks that way, but it probably won't be. Um, I just, can't, I cannot, I just can't believe, that given where we're at, this is not the ideal time to sell fucking anything. No. You know, I, I I think that there's there's two things for me. You know, no, from a negative point, if if we go down, then I think there's so many different things in play. It, it's unbelievable. Um, I think that, and, and that's everything. That's new owners. That's administration. That's just you. The whole gamut is in play. Um, if we stay up, that's a different ball game altogether. And my worry is I'd love to see us sold at that point because I think we've got some value. I think we've got we've got some assets on the pitch. We've got a good coaching staff. Feels like it's not a complete basket case. So I can, I can see that. My worry is if these lots stay, it, it feels to me, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but Bowie seems to have not had... I think he's just had a bit of um, like a cocoon. It's like his players on the training pitch... First team, that's all you focus on, nothing else. And he's and sort of reaping the rewards. But I think that's a, a bloody good sort of segue into, well, the first team of the, of the men's is important. But for me, I'm just, again, fucking stunned what I'm reading about, the, obviously, the women's team. Uh, I, I just... I was listening back to the... Um, Viv Solomon Ottobor, um pod uh, yesterday and how I felt when he was talking about the contract offer from Monk and how that made me feel about our, my club and it's exactly the same feeling when I was reading about the women's team and, and hearing how it's being run or not being run you know it, it, it's, it's, it's not even fucking embarrassing I don't even know where to start with it you know not even getting minimum wage no training facilities, bringing their own kit. They're a fucking Premier League team. They were, they've been 
one of the best women's trailblazing fucking yeah. professional teams for years. Fucking yeah. hell, Liverpool we've, didn't we've even have a had a good team women's team. We were... Yeah, and, and I just... It's like you, you, you'd like to think there are certain pockets of the club that are going to be protected. But so far, the academy shot to fucking pieces. The women's team is basically just not being run at all by anybody. They're just having to fend for themselves. And, and I've said time and time again, supporting Blues isn't just about three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. It's about everything. And as I, as I see it now, and we talked about Dong, I hope this fucking takes him down. I hope it takes him down because it just seems to me that he's trying to cut costs. He sees it as a, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get why we should have a women's team. He doesn't understand it. It's a cost to so fuck it off. And I hope this is the thing that fucking brings him down. So anyway, rant over. Carl, what do you think? I think you've probably covered fucking everything. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, I don't think shambolic, disgraceful, shocking, any of those fucking words you want to use. It, it just doesn't cover it, does it? Like you say, we were one of the better, best women's sides for years. You know, we won the fucking Women's FA Cup, for God's sake. You know, we've competed well throughout the years. You know, we've had some quality. And there still are some quality players at the club, you know. But we've had some real quality who've really gone on to do stuff, you know, in for, for bigger teams. Yeah. And now, I mean, look, going through Twitter this morning, I think we said before we came on, you know, looking at some of the women who are, who are tweeting out who still play for the club, which is yeah. fucking unreal that they're doing it, you know. It's uh, to echo your sentiments. I fucking hope it brings him down. It's got to. Like, how can you treat well, anybody like this? Not just fucking people who are meant to be under your direction, care. I don't yeah. know fucking what word, you know, <clears throat> it is disgraceful. And to not be paid the, the minimum wage when they're playing professional sport, elite sport, they're the top of the level of their game. It's just fucking outrageous. Yeah. And, and it makes me angry. It makes me sick, you know, because we. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't necessarily watch the, the women's games, but I do follow them on Twitter and stuff like that and try to keep up mm. with the news and things that are going on. And you can see how much it means to the management staff, the players that are there, you know? Yeah. And to have some people who probably had never heard of Birmingham fucking 10, 15 years ago make decisions that is effectively ruining lives and putting people's fucking health at risk as well if yeah. they're not with the proper facilities yeah. is outrageous. And something's got to be done. While it is, I don't know, but something has to happen well, somewhere. To, to be honest, Scott, I think the fact that it's got profile <clears> says <throat> a lot. I mean, it's been on Sky. It's, yep. You know, social media is melting down. I, I, I'd like to think that, you know, the, the women that play for Blues and represent the club feel that, you know, without sounding cliched, they're not alone. And what we, we need to be doing something, what that is, you know, we certainly need to start thinking about it because... Yep. It's fucking not acceptable. It's not. I mean, I mean, the dickhead has done that many things. I mean, so many things that you could probably put in the it's football bracket, but this isn't. This is something completely different. It's not football. It's just toxic no, it's, now. No, yeah. I mean, what well, it, it? It's just he's devoid, completely devoid of understanding. And Carl, you touch it's duty of care to your staff. This fucking non. And and like I said, it, absolute the amount of girls that get into football and just sport in general, you know, whether they play for blues or anybody else, sport is so critical for, for young young kids to just have something. And if they want to come and play for blues, fucking great. But just to have you know, set, you know, treated as second class citizens in my in my book in is just just beyond yeah. You, you, you I, I just it, it just do me. So Tom, what 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 are your thoughts? Joe, I've got three three points I want to cover that have all come to mind. One of them, quickly, I'm just going to bat it out there, is um, I don't know if you guys see, you know, obviously when Panos was in control and stuff, he, he's quite vocal on Twitter occasionally about these new owners um, and will openly slate them. And I'm just sat here thinking, fuck off, you sold us to them. Why are you coming out here like... Yeah. I, oh no! It gets it gets me really angry because you you're slating the people that you sold us to, so you knew what we were in for. Um, so I don't understand why he openly does that. That doesn't make sense because he is just as much to blame, essentially, as the blokes who are in here doing what they're doing. Um, so that annoys me. Thing number two is um, I meant to mention this earlier about Von Petch, who's now virtually almost. A completely owning the club um you know he's, he's a real estate developer 
um, we sold the stadium to him. What I what I fucking dread is, oh, we'll knock down the stadium. We'll go move into uh, some other whatever. Because, I mean, it was mentioned on uh, Daniel Ivory's article about us possibly moving stadiums. That is a very slim, slim possibility of all the crazy possibilities of what this could mean because they are being quiet about it. So you ca- you're, you're obviously not going to think positive about it. Um, so there's that which is worrying in itself. And it's another Chinese owner, essentially, that we know fuck all about. And then um, you come to the women's team now that really just seems like it's being treated to force it out. Like, they've not been treated well all season. I mean, before then, all the players were going. There was no incomings. Every single player in sight was being sold with, like, three or four incomings on freeze. Um, yep. And in fairness, the business that has been done this season has actually been quite good transfer wise. They've brought in some uh, bargains that have kept this team a team, essentially, because, yeah. you know, they're not in the relegation zone. They're just above it, which at the start of the season, anyone who predicted how our women's team was going to fare, they did not expect us to stay up. Like it looked like the women's team was going to get relegated because it had lost all its best players. Um so no, that that was concerning. That was where it all began, and now it just looks like it's kind of being binned off. You know, no one's being taken care of. There was obviously recently that issue of um, Dong didn't want the games moved to St George's Park. Uh, there was no re- there was no specific reason for that. He didn't want to leave um, playing at, at Solly Old Moors' ground, even though we weren't really being able to play games there because the pitch wasn't good enough. Whereas if we go to St. George's Park, we get the games out of the way, but Dong didn't want it to happen. Why? I don't fucking know. He Mm. just wanted the games to be stopped virtually. That's the way it seemed. And obviously the FA got involved and now we do play games at St. George's Park. Um, So that was dodgy in itself. And now they're just not being, there's not much communication. They're not being spoken to. And it really, really wouldn't surprise me if the next step was unpaid wages. Because yeah. that is the direction these this sort of thing tends to go in. Um, it, as soon as it starts once, it will happen continuously. Yeah, And it does sound like the slow, disgusting elimination of the women's team. And it's, it's vile. It is horrible to hear. Yeah. But that does sound like the motive and comes out with the women's team is thriving. Bollocks, bollocks. Yeah, I mean, such a liar, such a liar. And you just want to punch his fat face. You really do. (laughs) He's got one of those faces. It's just so square and fat and you fully just want to wrap your fist around him. But I I don't know what what he's doing is just shambolic, to say the least. Um, And I, I honestly can't predict the direction, but. Well, yeah, I mean, I can predict his negativity right now. I I, I think this is one of the, and and rightly so, I think is one topic that it gets, it will get a shitload of airtime. It will get a lot of airtime, and rightly so. Um, And I say, I hope it takes him down. And just just from my point of view, um, probably won't be overly popular, but if you're going to have another team, and I had this in a, a previous sport that I worked in. If you're gonna if you're gonna commit to it, I can commit to it. So we've had Cov playing at Blues this season. Now I'm not saying that women should necessarily play every single game at St Andrews. There's I have I would ne- I wouldn't have a problem with it at all if they played 50% of the home games at St Andrews and 50% somewhere else. Whatever. You know, if they're playing the big teams, let's I can commit to it. If they stay up and they're playing the the Man Cities and the Chelsea's and those sort of teams, they should be playing at St Andrews. And okay. You know, it may be that there's not going to be massive crowds, but you've got to start somewhere. And we need to show them they're an important part of the club rather than what, what they're at at the moment, which, you know, it, it, like I said, it, it's it's another one of those kicking the bollocks as a fan. You just feel shit and you can't really do a whole certain can't do a lot about it at the moment, apart yeah. from doing what we're doing now, which is talk about it. So, yeah, I, I just hope that, that we need to keep this going. We need to keep the dong out campaign going. You know, it, it, it's it's really important. Do you reckon um, he's still having a tantrum over losing Karanka? So he's just well, yeah, anything pro- he probably. But on. you know, I I just think that he's massively on the periphery, and I think the people above him are saying, you know, we need the, the managers come in. He's been appointed by somebody a far loftier position than than him uh, than Dong. So. 
it's very much right. Let him get on with it. And they're, and they're, you know, proving the pudding. If we stay up, will be what happens next season. Um, and, and I think if Dong stays, oh, fucking hell. But we should get boat. the Blues Collective lads on the pod or um, whoever's, yeah. whoever's at the top of it just to chat about all that. Yeah, I, I, I just think that, um, it, it, let's put it this way, lots of shit going on. But first things first, two wins out of three, looking okay at the moment, looking like we might stay up. And once we stayed up, there is so much shit to sort out. 